Hi, this video is an overview of several inferential statistics that are used for examining the real difference. There is a Korean proverb, 도토리 키지기. They are Doturis yeah, or Archons. And uh, this proverb implies that the compared things are more or less the same. For the following three weeks, we are going to cover the statistical techniques that uh, are facilitated to conclude whether the difference is either statistically significant finding or the amount you can ignore. The frequently used techniques for this purpose are chi-square test, t-test, and analysis of variance or ANOVA. The chi-square test compares the frequencies, whereas the other do the means or variability. The statistics will tell you statistically whether the difference is significant or not. However, still, you need to observe the data and to find relevant implications. In order to find the proper statistical techniques, you should have the data in an appropriate form. In other words, the type of a variable plays a decisive role. Perhaps you have a very similar research question as mine, but depending on how you have designed your variable, the analysis process will be different. From the next slide, let me introduce you several examples of a research design. Basically, all of them are related with the season and sales of books. First, you can ask for the book sales of four seasons along the year. Every three months, you have a data. Then you will have four numbers to compare each other. You are pretty sure that the four numbers will be different from each other. Then, how would you decide whether the difference is a real difference or the amount you can simply ignore? The chi-square test is used to examine the difference in this case. And in this case, the independent variable is, yes, the season. This independent variable has four levels, which are spring, summer, fall, winter. Consequently, the dependent variable is, yes, the sales of books or the amount of book sales. Um, same research structure but different data collection. Let me introduce you different situation. In order to generalize the seasonal influence on the book sales, um, I would rather recommend you to collect the sales data for many years or collect the data sales data from many stores. Then you can compare the average book sales of spring, summer, fall, and winter. In this case, you compare four means, so four averages. The dependent variable is, yes, the sales data um, of a store for many years or the sales data from many stores. Now it becomes a bit more complex. Perhaps the gender difference influences the likelihood to read books. So as the independent variables, the season and the sex can be considered. Here you have two independent variables and one dependent variable. Now there are more than one dependent variable. Meanwhile, you read ebooks, right? As well as paper books. If the seasonal change influence the 
our um, our likelihood to read something, read text, it sounds also plausible that sales of not only books but also the sales of ebooks or magazines will be also influenced by the seasonal change. Moreover, you can add the gender difference here to the independent variable. Then you will have two independent variables and three dependent variables. So this will be influence the three at once. Such a structure seems to be a bit complex, but it is necessary if um, it is um, uh, it is required. So it is technically possible. As described through the three examples, we can design different research hypotheses. Depending on how the variables are designed or how their relationship uh, is designed, you can find uh, more proper statistics. Firstly, when you are examining the real difference among frequencies, you perform the chi-square test. The frequency is, in fact, the matter of ratio. So when you need to compare the ratios, you can conduct chi-square test for goodness of fit test if you have one variable. And when you have two variables, then chi-square test for the independence. That would be more appropriate. Second and third things are comparing mean scores, so average scores. When you need to compare two means, t-test will be perfect. However, when you need to compare more than two mean scores, the t-test is no more uh, useful. Then you need to perform the ANOVA tests. The techniques in the parentheses, like Wilcoxon Sandering test or Man with New test, etc., they are the, uh, the non-parametric alternatives of the parametric test. So Wilcoxon signed rank test is a non-parametric alternative to pair the sample to t-test, and so on. Perhaps without having learned any of these statistics, it will be still um, confusing or difficult to answer the following before class quizzes but um, I'm quite convinced that uh, you will enjoy this challenge. Thank you for attention.